Joanna, she's here. Yeah. Please, uh, Cantillo? Cantillo. Yeah. So, <laughs> please, she's from uh, uh, Washington uh, University. Next University, United States, of course. Please. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, um, okay, so I'm going to start here showing just this first slide. And maybe <coughs> you're, this is a big tree, uh, tree leaf maple tree. And um, maybe you're wondering why I'm showing this picture if we are in a root conference. Uh, it's actually, um, it's just branches. And then I just want to highlight that this branch is covered with a huge mass of mosses. You can see here mosses and all type of epiphytes, but it's not only the branch that is covered with mosses, it's also the trunk covered uh, with all this type of um, epiphytes or non-vascular plants. And then if you notice here, there's a person sitting here on the branch. Um, so just as a reminder. Um, so my talk is a uh, canopy hydraulic redistribution. So actually um, I work with canopy roots. And so it's canopy roots and water relations. Um, and so I'm going to just start talking about this pack, soil plant atmospheric continuum. Um, and we are all familiar that water moves against gravity um, thanks to just following the cohesion tension theory and moves because of the water pressure gradient. So we know um, it starts with a very high water potential and then if you move up um, on the body of the tree, it will uh, um, in decrease the water potential and that um, difference of gradient will um, allow water to move against gravity. And we know if we just put numbers of water potential in the tree, we know here that between the leaf and the atmosphere there's the biggest gradient and that's actually that ex uh, generates that force that pulls up water against gravity. But now uh, if you remind, remember that picture that I showed you just in the first slide, um, so there is also like this type of um, mosses and epiphytes and that can also accumulate a lot of water. And so it can be also an alternative source of water in the canopy. So here is this just like um, another source of water and eventually those um, masses of mosses and plants, litter, organic matter, they compose over time and develop a thick layer of something that we call canopy soil. And then that canopy soil that makes everything change everything in within the tree. And so let's think about just the tree. Now it has something canopy soil here. And so if it has canopy soil, it has all those sorts of water, how is actually the movement of water within the body of the tree. Um, so we know, and we just saw in different presentations, but also there have been studies that show that there's also bidirectional uh, flow. So this will change according to the conditions. Of course, it will change the pressure gradient here. And then the water movement will uh, can be bidirectional, so in both weights, or it can be just only reverse flow. But also it depends of actually on the conditions. And so again, just to talk about the canopy soil, um, there have been some research about what are the properties of this soil if it's similar to the underground soil and it can retain water or nutrients similar to the soil underground. And this is a comparison between a uh, bee leaf maple tree and Sitka spruce that also are covered with these huge masses of um, mosses. And then if you focus only on the amount of carbon and nitrogen, um, you can see, of course, there is a big difference because of the area, but it's relatively significant the amount of carbon and nitrogen that you can see on the canopy soil which is an inside that actually that kind of soil can also like be an alternative source for the host tree. And then here in this table, I'm just showing um, different type of forest and how um, the abundance of those kind of soils in different forests. And if you focus on Monte Verde, Costa Rica, it has around 21,000 kilograms per hectare of canopy soil, which is also very beneficial, not only for the ecosystem, but also maybe for the individual trees. And so this is just a cross section of a branch. And then um, here you can see all the epiphytes. And then eventually it becomes a canopy soil, so a thick layer of 10, like 15 to 20 centimeters thick. And then um, canopy roots grow from the branches underneath those canopy soil. And so these are the canopy roots that I'm studying. And canopy roots are um, adventitious roots. So we are all familiar 
with uh, uh, the principal root system. Uh, adventitious roots are all those ones roots that grow in unusual parts of the body of the tree, on the leaves or on the branches. And then um, there are adventitious roots for development and also adventitious roots that develop because of a stress or a winding, so uh, flood or drought stress. There are different types of adventitious roots. Um, but these ones are actually growing um, underneath this. So this is also, again, the um, big leaf maple tree. And then I'm just showing you here where actually the roots are. And if you remove that layer of, canop of canopy soil, you can see here part of the roots. So these roots um, were discovered by um, Nalini Natkarni, also known as the Queen of Canopy, because of her canopy research. And she discovered these roots in 1981, and since then there have been a little research about, if, uh, about these roots. And so um, my question actually is um, assessing if actually these roots are active and they can uptake water and nutrients, and maybe they can just redistribute, that water and nutrients can redistribute at the canopy level and eventually decouple completely the tree from the soil underground, or not completely, but at least alleviate in some way uh, under dry conditions uh, the tree. So this experimental, um, this is the experimental design. So this project has a greenhouse and field uh, part. Um, so the greenhouse experiments have how tr like tracking water with dye and isotopes, have subflow measurements and some ecophysiological <coughs> microscopy measurements. And then today I'm just going to focus on these two questions, a canopy root activity and hydraulic redistribution. And at the end we have some uh, questions related to root development and anatomy that includes the field, the field experiments. Um, so my first question is, is there water uptake, water movement from the canopy soil via canopy roots? Can they actually uh, redistribute water to up towards other plants, plant organs? And then the second question is how plants uh, with canopy roots can cope with drought stress compared to plants without canopy roots. Is there an advantage or alleviation? And the last question is, are those canopy roots permanently active? Or do they, pay, or do they depend on or certain seasonality or environmental condition? So the greenhouse experiments I'm doing it, uh, with poplar trees. Um, they're hybrids, um, Populus alba uh, crossed with tremula. And then um, tr to tracking and label water flow, I'm using this air layering technique that is a propagation technique uh, where we develop the roots. And then after we got the roots, uh, we add, we submerge the roots in dye and then also add the isotope labeling just to track the movement of water. So the air layering technique, if you're not familiar, is uh, we start first removing the bark and then we add um, oxygen. Uh, we cover it with peat moss just to simulate a canopy soil, and then we cover it completely with aluminum foil for a month, and then eventually we got um, canopy roots in the tree. Um, then we submerge those roots um, in dye, and initially we start peeling the, the branch, and we don't see any tra trace of the dye, but uh, at some point we start looking at uh, seeing um, some traces of that dye moving. <coughs> Um, so at, at the end, we peeled the whole branch and then we saw actually dye moving towards the tip. So actually, this just shows that those roots are, it's an evidence that actually those roots are um, active. Um, but this is just one move, one direction of the mov movement of the dye. Um, so I wanted to see if actually there was a reverse flow. And then I check um, the next day. And then actually there's also, um, dye traces at the stem level. And also here in the trunk you can see some dye. But um, this could be also just by diffusion at night or it could be also reverse flow. So we actually want to confirm. Um, we haven't confirmed it yet, but we are gonna do future experiments using subflow um, sensors. Um, so these are just qualitative results to show that actually those kind of periods are active and kind of take water from the canopy soil. Uh, it needs to be confirmed with subflow sensors just to check if actually there is some reverse flow. Now the second question is um, how plants with canopy roots cope with drought stress compared to plants without them? So for this, tree is, uh, for this experiment, um, there are two different experiments that I have done uh, from the, there are 15, 22 days. And there are three different treatments. The first one is a well water plant 
So the pot is completely, it's wet, and there's no canopy soil, so it's just a well water plant. The second treatment is a completely dry plant, and the third treatment is a dry pot, but it has a wet canopy soil. So if those canopy roots are active, then the plant with canopy, with pot completely dry, it will survive eventually. So if you notice here in the bottom, the relative water content um, over time for well water will, man will be maintained, but for a plant that is completely dry, eventually it will drop completely. But for a plant that has a, an active canopy root, I don't expect to have a very well, like maintain a relative water, water content as high as the well water, but not as low as the completely dry. And so to do this experimental, um, I connected, I, I made, I developed three air layering systems and they are connected with IV bags and I'm just providing water through the IV bags. And then we cover it completely the pots with a plastic to avoid dripping water, so the pots are completely dry. Um, and so for the results, um, here is just soil moisture tension over time. And then again, just remember, blue are gonna be the well water plants, DW will be the plants with the canopy soil, and DD will be the plants that are completely dry. And so here you can see that actually the soil moisture tension is maintained over time in the both experiments. They have the same pattern, so it seems like the plants with canopy soil can um, survive longer than actually the plants that are completely dry. So those canopy roots are in some way allevi alleviating the drought stress conditions. Then for um, stomata conductance, um, they're just showing how open or close are the stomata and also showing us like transpiration rate. Again, we see the similar pattern. So you can see the well water plants maintain a higher rate of transpiration uh, compared to the completely dr um, drought stress. Uh, but the plants with the canopy soil maintain in the, in the middle. So it seems like the, the transpiration rate is not as high, but it's in the middle. Um, and finally, um, we have uh, water potential measurements. And here you can see that in the first experiment, uh, even though like, they, they have, again, sim similar pattern, the DW plants uh, maintain a high water potential compared to the completely dry, but not as high as the well water plants. So these um, were the trees at the end of the experiment. Um, and then you can see here all the plants that were completely dry. Here are the plants with the canopy soil roots, and these are the plants well water. So you can see at the end of the experiment, it seems like um, they were not completely dead as the well, completely dry plants. And uh, it, it just showing that actual canopy soil, canopy roots are, are beneficial for the trees and, uh, and are alleviating the drought and stress conditions. It didn't happen for all the trees that we have. Um, so you can see here also DW almost dead. So some of the canopy roots are not helping uh, for some of the trees. And finally, we use uh, heavy water to trace the water movement. Um, and so I add the heavy water to the canopy soil and then uh, collected samples of different parts of the tree uh, from the same branch, neighbor branches, from the roots underground. And then the results were the following ones. Um, so you can see here the DW are the green ones again. And most of the DW, like most of all, mostly, um, all the parts of that we collected for the kind of the plants with the canopy roots actually um, we found heavy water including the roots underground so it seems that the water actually is moving to other parts of the, the tree and also including the roots underground okay thanks um, so with this um, I'm just um, concluding that yeah there is redistribution towards other organs so there's water isotope uh, isotope water that found in different parts of the tree. And also, uh, the trees that have canopy roots actually perform better than the trees without that canopy roots under dry conditions. So it seems that there is some alleviation. Um, so the next step is just to apply um, similar experiments at the Olympic <coughs> National Park, uh, big leaf maple trees here, and using sap flow sensors just to confirm that there is bi bidirectional or reverse flow in the forest, and also using heavy water to track the movement of water through the uh, canopy roots. So um, that's it. So I just want to thank um, my two labs. Um, Lisbon Bunkenburg is my advisor, and Su Hyun Kim, my other advisor. And 
of the University of Washington and NSF that is supporting this project. Thanks.